Um, I'm a graphic designer and local historian, and what gets me interested um, is issues of sustainability, transport sustainability, and issues of tackling inequality. Okay, and a few years ago, I was asked to um, write a booklet um, and design it uh, about this this pathway here. Uh, it's the Riverline Greenway, it's a car-free pedestrian and cycle route between Borwell and Baseford. Um, and here's the, here's the Riverline uh, here. Okay, more about that as, as, as we go, go on. Um, that's the Riverline in 1947, really bad floods. Um, it'd been a really dreadfully cold winter, and when it thawed, you had these fantastic floods. It was embanked, given this severe embankment in the 60s, to improve drainage. Uh, so that's why that appears that way. Um, there's a few sort of links with what we're talking about, or connections if you like, uh, with, with the exhibition and what other people have been talking about. Um, one is the geology, magnesium limestone, that connects with Cresswell Crags, and the other is, of course, uh, cycling. Uh, this is the plan uh, that the council have done, or the trans the, um, some of the transport team there, um, a few years ago, and it's called Access and Biodiversity Study. And basically, the idea is here's the lean. It goes from uh, north to south through the city, um, about six six miles long within the city, fourteen miles long in total. And the idea is to join up lots of different footpaths and cycle paths and have this this cycle route. Okay, um, it's already pretty much there in Wilford, and then you get to where uh, Rally used to be where the Jubilee campuses, they bossed it up. Thank, thanks to the University of Nottingham, especially, especially phase two. It's completely ridiculous. So that's a mess, we need to sort that out. And um, the only bit that's any good at the moment is between Borwell and Baseford. Um, this shows actually it's quite, quite a good plan. This is in some detail. Look, they're saying, need some bridges here, need to widen the path here. Um, and then these are the numbers. And then you break it down and that shows you how much it all is, who we need to contact and pester, and this is the time scale. All in all, okay, about six, six miles long, cycle route, uh, 10 million quid. Uh, in order to get that money, it'll take about 10 or 15 years. Meanwhile, you know, Wayne Rooney um, is, is allowed to earn what he does. Um, some of you might not know where on earth I'm talking about. Okay, this is a map of Nottingham. Here's the centre of it. Um, here's the River Trent, the main river, but this tributary here, this key tributary here is the, is the Lean. And generally, it was a very industrialised area in the 19th century. And here's Bullwell, and here's Old Baseford, and here's the Greenway, just here. Um, so, the other key aspect about Bullwell and Baseford is actually that they're quite working, very, very working class areas. Uh, quite neglected in some ways um, on the periphery, um, and and so this project was always always about sort of raising awareness and getting people interested in it. Uh, so you start reading about Borwell and Baseford, and you find out actually there's there's not much that has been written. You find one or two things like this, um, quite cl close to being quite serious academic stuff from 1948. Here's the Riverline here shows you what well was like before the railways came. And then in the archives, you find out how the lean emerged. Uh, British Rail was, <coughs> was selling off this pot of land. There was an incentive for local authorities to buy it. Local communities were nagging away. Can we, can we sort this land out, please? And this shows you the river lean as it emerged as a greenway in, in the mid-80s, mid to late 80s. And this is the booklet. I did. Um, this is the map of the route, um, and this shows you some of the things you can see along the route. Okay, I'll, I'll pass some of those around later. Uh, so, what on earth did I write about? How did I make uh, the river and the cycle route connected to its history? Uh, is it connected? It's just a dirty old river, it's probably inconsequential. Well, actually, it's. Um, I spelled townscape wrong there. That's not Toadscape, that's Townscape. Um, um, it, the Riverline is essential to the town, Townscape, the landscape, 
and the economy and the society. Okay, that's the things we're going to talk about. So if you get bored, you know where we are. Um, here's townscape. First of all, history. It begins with geology. Um, or one of the things it begins with here. Here's Nottingham. Here's uh, the River Lean on this, it pushing all this gravel and alluvium. And that blue stuff, I think that's what this chap's been talking about with Cresswell, is that magnesium limestone. This is its southern limit. And it comes out in a massive crop around Borwell. Okay? Really, really important. Lots of coal. Tons of the stuff. And of course, Nottingham on that dry, sandy sandstone stuff that's good for Sherwood Forest and all the rest of it. So just look at that and then, then look at this and you can see how by 1775 um, development and agriculture was really based on that geology. So where that sandstone is, it's all forest and woodland, it's good for the Jukeries, it's good for the aristocrats, it's good for hunting, it's very dry. And in the west, that mixed geology much more agricultural, um, more diverse economies uh, going on. Here's that river lean. Um, if we focus on our little, our tiny little bit of greenway that I've, I've been given to do. I mean, I know it's not much, but... <sighs> okay, let's, let's have a go at it. Um, what, what do we find? Uh, we find that actually the ancient street pattern, which goes back to the Middle Ages, radiates from key crossing points over the lean. And these key crossing points, this actual street pattern, is still with us today. Uh, um, has been circumvented by uh, 20th century road building for the car, but a lot of that is still there. Its very layout is based around um, the river and its floodplain. Um, lots of little tributaries here and so on. Um, 1775, Chapman's map. 1335, Sanderson's map just before the railways came Nottingham, 1839, and you can see much more urban, much more urban development going along, along those key crossing points of the River Lean. Lots of mills, corn mills, uh, bleach works, this is very important. Um, uh, another bleach works over here, using the power of the Lean. And you've got this, following this tributary of the Lean here, you've got this thing here, limestone quarries where that magnesium limestone is. Okay. Uh, this is what the landscape sort of looks like around this area. It occasionally sweeps up the valley of the Lean uh, terraces and comes down towards sort of winding crossings. And as you get further towards the river, you see much older buildings, such as this uh, non-conformist chapel of the late 19th century. The established church, the established... Uh, societies are, are, are the older churches are much near, nearer the crossings, of course. Church of England, and this is probably the oldest building in Borwell from the 17th century, a grammar school uh, founded by a local landowner. So, quite interesting stuff, very unusual architecture, quite early brickwork for that, that, that time. And in the centre of Borwell, um, on that medieval pattern around the lean, you've still got a busy, very working class <coughs> high street doing rather well. I took this on a Sunday, that's why there's some short ones. Um, although a lot of the local people still miss a lot of the old family firms. Um, but further away from the, the actual old, oldest uh, points, as the, the streets radiate, you find this uh, former shop fronts uh, that have now gone. And same here, former shop fronts now gone at Baysford, um, Midland Bank, not HSBC. Um, and one of the reasons why all this, this changed um, was because of what happened to Bullwell in the 60s and 70s. It was changed for new council house building and for new road building. The, all these former terraces and working class communities completely remodelled. This is Bullwell. All the old terraces, the old quarries. Uh, and this is what happened. Just look at that pattern there. Look at the old street commercial road. 
that's all that remained of it. Uh, what happened was uh, new estates were built around a Radburn system of planning. Big grass verges, big green space, um, cul-de-sacs, um, and the idea was, 60s and 70s, everyone was very scared about the rate of car growth and panicked. And so what they decided to do uh, was completely separate pedestrians uh, from uh, traffic. So that's why we had this Radburn plan. You can see a Radburn estate here as well. Huge grass verges. And had another effect within Borwell, of course. Um, as these estates were being built, let's build a bypass through Borwell. Um, these are the estates being expanded upon. And this is the old medieval street being cut across by a, a huge road in the early 80s. So road building really changed things. Also, um, it happened in Old Baseford as well. Old Baseford Flats uh, didn't last probably more than 10 years. Uh, because um, it was very poorly uh, built in terms of its construction, and not necessarily in its idea. Um, all the terraces, all the old streets gone, and this is what happened. So, the, the townscape of Ball and Baseford has really changed in the late 20th century. A lot of the old connections have gone. A lot of mistakes have been made. What about the economy of Borwell and Baseford? This isn't Borwell and Baseford. These are in Nottingham. You'll see this sort of thing absolutely everywhere. And they're built of this stuff. It's that Borwell stone. And this is where it's quarried, remember? This is where it all comes from. And the whole thing is, is throughout Nottingham. It's such an important thing, and yet nobody's written anything about it, really. Uh, these are the quarries here. There's a Radburn-style uh, council house. And this shows you some of the aesthetics of this limestone quarry area as it used to be, this bridge from 1835. Um, and you get this sort of thing, Methodist chapel, early 19th century, old cottages. Actually, it's quite distinctive. Um, old workshops, another old workshop. Um, really had quite a distinctive style of its own. Um, an old forge, no, old mill that was. Um, and, and what, not only was the key, one of the key um, sides of its economy uh, regarding this stone, but also the mills, it was, uh, was also the bleach mills and corn mills. And this is uh, based around that, that uh, lean side area. Um, a ble a bleaching, you have textiles and hosiery within Nottingham, and when you sell it, you don't want it to be. Uh, pale yellow or dirty, you want it perfect white. And so you have to use chloride of lime uh, to make it perfect white. And then you leave it out in the sun and let it dry, and then that's, that's what it was. Um, so you had all these small scale manufacturers in the early 19th century, um, and all those little workshops. And all this changed uh, in 1849 when the railway came. This is the Midland Railway. And you can see how the railways utilised the landscape of the lean. And generally, they were stretching west for those coal fields that we saw um, earlier on. Um, most of those um, railways have gone since the uh, rationalisation of the railways during the Beeching Acts. And um, what you have these strange embankments, like a lost civilization. This, you know, little mounds that seem to poke up for no reason. And they were stretching, they were stretching west and north for, like I say, for the coal, coal. This is a really good photograph from Bestwood, one of the big pits of the area. Um, the railways did change a lot, and this is what they did to those small-scale bleach works and manufacturers. They turned them into factories. Um, this is a Pearson and, and Brothers uh, bleachers and lace finishes, I think from about 1870. And then you can see the river lean just here. And you can see how brutal it is to the river. Here's the river going up like that. Um, in the late 19th century, there was a comp complete expansion within its economic capabilities. 
a really strong brewery was built uh, 1900, again utilising uh, local waters. Um, hosiery, the manufacture of textiles through circular knitting machines, was a key aspect of, of the lean from the early 19th century. And even by 1950, you had this really strong, convincing hosiery fact works built. Um, family firm still going, still makes circular bandages. Uh, for the NHS and for boots and upstairs they've still got the old machines from the mid and early 19th century when it was uh, small scale workshops um, and of course most of this is gone um, apart from one or two examples and we have huge problems of un uh, unemployment uh, which is probably the real cause of sort of the low income in, within the area so those are this, uh, the final thing we talk about is the society um, and how that's changed, and it's really quite revealing. Um, 19th century, in a nutshell, it's a tale of two halves. Um, this shows that the, the proud, um, established um, nature of the Methodist Church of, um, in the late 19th century. Um, this shows how small and uh, burgeoning they were back in 1811. Um, and of course the Methodist was really the church of the working class um, who didn't feel represented within the Church of England. Nice plaque, 1811, just a few years uh, before the end of the Napoleonic War. Uh, years of struggle, um, foreign trade declined, Luddism was growing, and this was a chap who was very familiar with Borwell, uh, Jeremiah Brandreth, and um, as you can see, I think the artist quite liked his hair. Um, there's a lot of people say the, the last person who led a you know, really, really um, revolutionary um, campaign in England. And um, he was a hosiery worker and he felt undercut by the new machines that were being manufactured, which actually making a, a poorer standard of product. And um, uh, he went into hiding at Bullwell, he was from Wilford, and he was very familiar uh, with the lean, and he was beheaded in Derby in 1817. Um, Lord, Lord Byron, near, near neighbour, along the banks of the lean, of course, at Newstead, he, his only maiden speech within the House of Lords, so his only speech in the House of Lords, was in favour of the Luddites, and, and calling all the jury and so on a bunch of idiots in, 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 in sort of... Uh, shorthand, and he said, you know, such marchings and counter-marchings from Nottingham to Bulwell, from Bulwell to Baseford, and so on. Um, really long speech, really good. So how did the authorities respond along the banks of the lean? Well, they were less than benign. This is the walls of a workhouse, um, which is basically a prison for the unemployed. If you were out of work and needed uh, uh, sustenance, uh, you could only get relief by crossing these walls from the entrance and being incarcerated and given really dull tasks to do, such as breaking stone or uncoiling rope. If you went in with your family, you were divided up into separate rooms and your food was weighed each week. Um, pretty grim stuff, everyone tried to avoid it. Um, I think it occupied about 300 people, but one of the, 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 the Guardian leaders said um, they could probably uh, double that because children are only half the size of adults. So you get an impression of how bad it was. Uh, generally, as the late 19th century wore on, it got better, but even in 1913, you have this story from the banks of the lean, um, yoked to the plough, uh, based for strange use of aged paupers, Considerable indignation has been aroused over allegations that old and decrepit inmates of a workhouse have been yoked to, to a plough in land belonging to the Guardians. Uh, the statements are being confirmed by several residents of Highbury Avenue, uh, who overlooks the workhouse grounds. And it goes on to describe a Midland railway driver who, on that railway we saw earlier, also saw that taking place. Um, so, if I had a time machine, I went back to the early 19th century, I'd want to get back home pretty quickly. 
Um, it's pretty grim stuff. Um, but by the time that this becomes an official public recreation park, things start getting better. This is Bullwell Bogs. This gets really busy. All the kids playing here get their socks wet and all the mums watch, etc. Um, you think, oh, it's just a, a small little park. It probably doesn't mean anything. But actually, this, is, this box was a series of a massive uh, political campaign in the 1870s. Um, a local landowner decided he was going to enclose the park and sell it off, but he hadn't um, thought about what would happen. And uh, a series of protests happened throughout the 1870s, and thousands of people gathered in Bullwell Market Square and protested against it. Um, here's, here's an account in the newspapers, and it says, um, a national organisation called the Commons Protection League got, uh, was helping out, and a mass meeting was held at Mor Bullwell Marketplace, 18th of June, 1879, um, and John D. Morgan, he's a bit like Owen Jones, he's going around the country, you know, been doing his speech. And he says, um, honesty for our right and privilege, and stating that the bogs, over which this is the landowner, Percy Cooper, claims the right of ownership, would be opened. And a large crowd of persons assembled to take part in the proceedings last evening. The bill announced the lecture would commence at seven o'clock, and when the lecturer appeared on its platform, a farmer's wagon... You know, it's almost like a Western, isn't it? You know, the same era. And there were four and 5,000 people present, many of whom were women and girls. And it goes on to say that uh, John said, right, we're going to break into the box, we're going to cut the fence, and we're all going to go in there. But don't wreck the flowers, because if you do, we'll, t we'll tell the authorities. That's what they said. And then after that, it, it rained. It really chucked it down. And that's how the story Ends. So they broke into the box. This is John De Morgan. This is what he was doing, going around the country, uh, campaigning for the protection of common land and public parks. But a lot of the legal proceedings were tied up um, by the Corporation of Nottingham, the City Council, who enclosed Bullwell in 1877 and sorted out this problem. And this bridge dates from this period when things start to get better. 1880, and generally it's the start of municipalisation, a great theme uh, across Western Europe and Britain. Uh, municipalisation of gas, municipalisation of water, um, uh, trams, public parks happening throughout Britain and Europe, and this is Vernon Park, uh, bought by the council in 1901. And as things get better, this is an account from Robert Mellors. He said, Borwell is now prosperous. Uh, a, a gradual, continuous improvement of the past 50 years has taken place in the condition of the working class. Peace has largely prevailed. Commerce enormously extended. And we can think about those municipal improvements and also that economy that was getting stronger. Uh, one, one of the good uh, examples of that is the former library from the 1920s. Uh, the road, Hyber Road, uh, that was formerly a tram route. And of course, uh, Baseford uh, Library as well, that period where uh, miners um, and local people were campaigning to the council to provide them with these services, which they did. It's also the Rivoli Green is a chance for design working uh, with the local authority to try and improve things and try and learn from the mistakes of uh, our road building past and, and um, do, do things like uh, greenways, cycle routes and footpaths which are really important. Thank you very much.